Okay. Good morning, Poppy. Good morning. Good morning to you and, and all members. Good morning to our community members. Welcome to Shamanic Sundays. Good to be back here with you this week. It was fun having my sister Nicole host the last couple of weeks, and I'm very happy to be here with you today. So good to see you. Um, lots of gratitude in my heart for you, Dad, and for all of our friends out there <clears throat> and all everyone who's trying to, um, you know, walk a good heart path to listen to their their heart, remember our, our inner connection and, and, and work together here in this planet we all share. So um, would you like to start us off with a, a blessing as we, we always do? Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for the blessing of right now and, and, and this gift of life and the gifts of creation, the opportunity to be in a human body with all our, our sensitivity and awareness to, uh, to to the, to the wonder of, of the world with all the problems and difficulties and challenges there's great wonder and amazement and, and beauty in the world and thank you for great spirit for this breath of life and, and the wonderful gifts of creation and our ancestor spirits and ancestor spirits of the land we live on here in santa barbara the chumash remember you here good medicine to, to you and thank you for our families and our communities and, and the opportunity to join today and, and open ourselves to what spirit would bring through that uh, has the potential to, to uh, help us polish up our stardust and shine brighter on the truth of who we are, our sacred, worthy, luminous beings that are loved, that are loved, which is forgiving and receiving and for healing of the sacred hoop. Wake up, wise up and live love now. Oh. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, <clears throat> maybe so. You um, you said you had something you wanted to share before we got into questions today. Yeah, actually, uh, two okay. things. When when people see me do this, uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, let people know what what these different sticks with feathers and yarn are are um, are, are called muvieres in uh, in Huichol. Uh, language and they're all connected with a place of power of pilgrimage that I've that I've been to it helps me connect with the spirit there having traveled to a place of of power of spiritual power and made offerings of gratitude and so creating a connection through time and space that exists when like a pick and picking up these antenna to vibrate the web to connect with those shamanic places of power to to be able to just affirm strengthen the work that we're doing here today so that's that's one thing and the other was I wanted to give you some feedback. So are you ready okay. for some feedback? I reckon, hoping you don't embarrass me here, but you know, that's part of our dynamic. So I guess go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to thank you for the, um, the medicine you shared with me yesterday. For the background for this is the listeners that I, I, my ego can get uh, easily triggered when I have uh, techno uh, problems, frustration. I get easily frustrated and irritated when things don't work. And then I call um, my daughter here, and usually I'm calling Let's her. Let's be clear. You call one of one of the daughters. If the other one doesn't answer, then you try the other. So we both are your IT department and, and some dear friends out in the community like Roger. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday I called you, and you reminded me of of the impact of when I'm calling you with with the toxic, frustrated energy, the impact yeah. it has on on you, and and so you were telling me about that. But I wanted to give you some support, uh, feedback of how uh, skillfully you gave me that feedback, how kindly and how gently, but yet powerfully, you gave me that feedback, and so I took it in. Um, and, uh, and, and felt like it dropped into a deeper place, recognizing the impact and said, oh, that, that, why, why create pain and suffering for your daughter that way? Because your ego had reactivity. So I just wanted to give you some juice for how skillfully you gave me that feedback with kindness and with clarity and, uh, and with strength. Thank oh, you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, yeah. since you, since you brought that up, I feel like we should share a little bit more because one of the. <clears throat> one of the um, areas of work that I do in bringing my own, the teachings of your work and the different indigenous um, elders that have shared their teachings with me. And so I, I strive to, you know, in my own way, carry forward the medicine teachings you've 
given me and, and, um, and that, that they have given me. So one of those, one of the like primary things is just this sense of knowing our, our inner connection and, um, our sense of global interconnection, our sense of me, just one little part in this incredible sacred web of life, um, that we're all so lucky to be here. Um, and I feel like that has, um, been such a key part of my life and, um, and I'm so grateful for being raised with, with that knowledge and tradition that I don't remember ever not knowing that. Um, and I, I do a lot of work in regenerative um, leadership and, and regenerative organizations and helping businesses to businesses and business leaders to be structured more regeneratively. And to me, that's intricately, intrinsically tied in with, with, um, with our, that sense of being part of, of the, the web of life. And it's this awareness of like living systems, right? So when we have moments where um, we feel the need, as I did yesterday, to tell you that how your IT call impacted me, um, uh, like I immediately think, okay, it's a system, right? We're all part of a living system. So when we do have to step into challenging situations or things as you put, like when things, um, what's the word? Uh what's the word you often use, like trigger you, or that's not the word you use most often, but, um, anyways, a reactivity, reactivity. Yes. That like, how can we go into the situation recognizing that we're part of a system? So if we're going to give someone feedback or it, in my case yesterday, I was asking with a request and sharing how, you know, your tone can impact my experience of a situation. Um, so before I went in, I was like, okay, how can I phrase my request so I convey how the energy impacts me and optimize for our greatest results? So I appreciate you um, saying that and um, hope that next time we have an IT problem, it'll go smoother. <laughs> okay. I'm working so, on it. Yeah. Yep. yep. You planted a seed that that maybe for the first time there was fertile ground to receive it. So it's starting to sink roots. And of course the test will be the next time my ego gets triggered, but I'm, I'm hopeful. <laughs> yep. Well, we're all, we're all only human and we're all, <laughs> I would say um, that I'm, whenever I've worked for a company that has an actual IT department, I've been so incredibly grateful for them because, um, because I am, I do my best, but I'm certainly not, not that. So, and again, shout out to um, folks like, Roger, who have been, who so support you and technology too. So um, anyways, um, let's see, on to the question of the day. Um, and I see some comments about our loving IT department <laughs> and um, appreciating us sharing our, our father-daughter relationship. And um, yeah, we have, we have a good one and we have our moments just as we all do. So Oh. We appreciate, I think, showing up in, in your openness and vulnerability is one of the things both you and mom modeled to Nicole and I. So we both strive to do that. So thank you. Oh. Um, okay. I got to pull up my question or the question that came to us. Um, and actually, it really resonated with me because um, I was going through some physical health stuff and I'm getting stronger, but that was part of why I couldn't be here the last few weeks. But it was great because Nicole was able to. So we loved that. But, um, but the question that, that came in <clears throat> was about applying um, shamanic principles to trauma, physical and or emotional trauma. Um, and of course, there's some, you know, philosophies out there that say our first moment of trauma is, is birth coming out from this beautiful womb of protection and sweetness where you're, you know, connected to your mom and, um, and of course, I want to acknowledge for some people when the mom is going through a hard time, maybe the womb doesn't even feel like such a safe place. So it could start even before birth. Um, but, but nonetheless, the question remains about applying shamanic principles to trauma. And as human beings, we're just never going to, there's always going to be trauma, whether it's, you know, a um, bad intera interaction with someone at the gas station or your, you know, intimate partners or your dad and daughter thing. So, um, so yeah, I would love to, um, allow you to respond to the question about dealing with trauma, physical and 
or emotional. Some tips on that from a shamanic perspective. Yeah. Well, what comes to me immediately is trauma is like an image of being walking innocently down the street. Like I, I remember as a little boy walking down the streets of New York City and they're just mobs, like rivers of people walking in, in both directions. And, and as if you're walking down the street, innocent and just enjoying yourself, walking and experiencing whatever experiencing as you're walking and somebody walks by and, and with all their might, it just punches you right in the stomach as hard as they can. And so what, what's going to be the response on a physical level? Well, you're gonna, it's going to like, like cave you in. It's like a collapse with under the, under the, uh, the jolt of, of that punch. And so a trauma by, by whatever the stimulus, whatever the cause of it is, is, is like that, which just mm, constricts and shuts down and it's been hurt. And so we need to protect and, mm, and, and, and feelings and energy triggered by that punch can get frozen in there energetically and impact us emotionally and, and mentally and, and spiritually uh, from that wound, from that punch. And so what's, what's, um, what might be helpful from shamanic uh, methodology and understanding uh, to respond to that situation? Well, one is the first thing is, is just to see, see it, see the, see the impact, just like you were giving me feedback about the impact of my reactive energy with a phone call yesterday when I was upset calling you with, with the techno stuff. So, in the impact of what happened when what happened energetically in my body and my mind and my spirit when that wound that trauma wound uh, punched me however it punched me and, and we don't have a power to to heal or transform something until we see what it is see the truth of, of what it is and the, the consequences of the impact um, whatever they might be so the first step is seeing opening our deeper vision to be able to be able to see and uh, depending upon the age of when that uh, uh, trauma incident happened then to go inside and see us as that, as, as, at that time when it was taking place and the impact of it and and given that impact of uh, hurt fear constriction uh, inflammation uh, what what's needed for healing what is needed for healing and just opening up to see what comes back in response to visualizing the trauma and its impact and listening to watching what comes back to that question what's needed for healing and then when you get that information it will come if you're paying attention and you're open receptive and humble uh, with sincerity to receive that information will come to you and then you then you start to act on it and so it may be to that wounded little girl or that wounded little boy by the traumatized by what happened is sending them love sending them healing light and love and tenderness and compassion and support and validation of their beautiful being the sacredness of of their being and just filling them up with that that kind of energy and, and helping them let go of um, f find the places where that constriction is from the wound and just helping gently open and release open and release using the power of imagination visualization to see healing light and love coming in with a breath and sending it to that little wounded one and helping them to know they're going to make it through whatever they're, they're traumatized by. They're going to survive. They're going to get through it. And eventually they're going to be able to grow to see the medicine teachings of the experience and how it can help empower their, their uh, understanding of, of life, life purpose and the medicine they carry, the teachings uh, they carry from that experience, like the trauma of my dad dying when I was three and a half and how it took a huge punch that constricted me and shut me down and and and, uh, and impacted me in so many ways that that um, that were hurtful about both to me and, and because of my hurt and not knowing how to deal with it, taking out our, out in the world and being hurtful to others until uh, 20 years old and medicine uh, opened me up to seeing all of this and that that there were alternatives I could I could live in a different way I can create a different story, a different response, a different relationship to the wound instead of being in victimhood to it, but to realize um, 
how can I, that there's a potential here. This is a test of what one tradition calls a spiritual curriculum, what I call a vehicle of opportunity to wake up, to wise up. And so the death of my father was teaching me about the medicine of impermanence. You know, it took me 20 years in medicine to begin to understand what that was about and been working with it ever since. But the teaching the medicine of impermanence is, is uh, so powerful in life because it, with, with the tr facing the truth of impermanence of everything on the physical plane is only here for a sh short, relatively short period of time. So be present for it. Be present for the people, the, the opportunities of being alive in the moment, wherever you are, whatever's happening, to be able to open awareness to, to spirit's presence, to love's presence, and be a channel for it, to wake up, wise up, and live love now. And I think that's the, 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 the traumas, uh, wounds, uh, and their impacts in our lives are, are um, you might say, a spirit knocking on the membrane that separates our consciousness from from cosmic consciousness and saying, hey, you're, the way you're responding to this, it's, it's, um, you're dreaming too small. You're, you're more Wait, than you, Dad, Can you say that again? I'm sorry, that, that it's the, it was consciousness and co you're bringing to your consciousness from the cosmic consciousness or what, what was that you said? Yeah, yeah. Opening uh, to a, a opening awareness to a broader bandwidth of consciousness. Mm -hmm cosmic consciousness yep. from the constricted state of ego identity, which is based on the illusionary perceptions of separation. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So it's like befriending our wounds, you know, as difficult as it is and, and giving ourselves permission to have whatever feelings and sensations and thoughts we have about it without any judgment uh, and let it, finding, uh, creating a safe container for that, all of that to be expressed. So none of it is, is repressed or denied or projected. And that, that helps open up the pipes. That's polishing up the, the pipes so the stardust can, can shine through and getting the medicine what, what's the teaching that, that, that has the potential to empower and improve and enrich my life through this trauma? What is it trying to help me see, bring into my awareness? Right. I love that, um, that being able to, like literally as you were just talking, have, recovering from surgery, um, right now I'm, I'm like putting my hand on, on the place where there's still some pain on my belly and, okay. and um, and literally seeing it like a little baby, you know, like when I would hold Corbin Luke, you know, tear up, <laughs> but when I would be holding Corbin Luke or Sebastian or, or really any baby I've held, but of course those three, especially, um, and just that sense of like, you just love them and forgive them and whatever they need, you will do for them, you know? So being able to like apply that to myself, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, it's opening yeah. Up, it's opening ourselves up as a channel to, mm -hmm. to it's always being given to us with the breath, the holy breath, yeah. that, that healing light and love. Yeah, and and Susan, who sent in that question to us, um, thank you for me because that's it's such a perfect question for me today too. So um, we always love getting questions from from people in our community, and then it's always a beautiful thing of how they resonate for so many of us because we're all just figuring things out together here. So. Um, so, Dad, maybe you could um, lead us through um, a visualization, as, as you do on these Shamanic Sundays, about <clears throat> healing trauma, physical or emotional, and, and meeting that, that little baby, that wounded, you know, whatever the source of that suffering and wound is, um, meeting that, that little innocent one and how we can do more healing of that trauma. Well, I think you just gave us a great start with uh, that when you spoke about putting your hand over your belly where you're still feeling mm -hmm. comfort from, from your recovery from the surgery. So with the gift of our awareness, let's drop inside to our lips within place and take a moment just to be thankful for the gift of awareness, just to be thankful for the gift of awareness. Because everything starts with our awareness. And we, when we bring our awareness to being breathed by the great mystery of the universe that creates the breath, that creates the energy field, that creates Mother Earth, creates the energy field around Mother Earth, 
that produces oxygen, this energy that our bodies physically need, uh, nurtured by the light from Father Son, the stardust coming to Mother Earth, and the plants and the trees working to produce that, that oxygen, this energy that flows into us, that gives us life, opening to receive it. Awareness of the impact, noticing, what it's like to be present, consciously aware, mindful of being breathed, being breathed in and being breathed out, letting go, long letting go breath, cleansing, releasing, it's no longer needed. And bringing awareness, everything starts with intention and bringing awareness to whatever trauma or wounds have happened in our lives, whatever might surface into our awareness right now, maybe one major wound, traumatic wound, or maybe a number of them, but just notice what comes into your awareness when you open to what wound of my life might be a opportunity for me to do some healing work with right now of being alive, the only time I can experience healing right sacred now. Just take a moment to see what comes up in your awareness of what that wound trauma might be. And seeing yourself, whatever age that took place, it might have been in the womb, it might have been in your birth experience, it might have been in your infancy, childhood, your adolescence, as a young adult. It's a middle-aged person. There's an older person, get an older person like yours truly, whatever it is, and just seeing the impact of yourself at that age when that punch to your gut metaphorically came in and hurt you and wounded you. And seeing what's needed, seeing what that one most needs in that wounded state. Are they feeling alone and separate and frightened and fearful? And so what do they need? They need to feel a flowing power of peace flowing into them, letting them know, I see you. You're not alone. I love you. You're lovable. You're important. You have meaning and purpose and beauty and creativity in the unique essence of who you are and you will make it through this difficult time and you will grow from it in ways that help you find your heart path what's most meaningful to you in this life what has most value for you in this life you'll be able to find connect attune and commune with that wisdom guidance and grow grow on the heart path walking your heart path to fullest blossoming, greatest good for what you have to contribute to the healing of the sacred hoof. And gratitude for this gift that we started with of awareness of the breath and changing the relationship to our wounds from that of victimhood to I'm gonna use what happened, and what was triggered inside of me to help me wake up the truth of who I am. I'm more than the body, the feelings, the sensations, the story. More than that. Opening the doorway of consciousness to attunement and a communion with the cosmic consciousness, the sacred unity that we're a part of, that lives in us, that we live in. Polishing up our stardust to show up as best we can in this life and do our part to bring through that healing of the sacred who may it be so for all who are listening will be listening all who we touch as we're channels for healing light and love and peace and creativity and wonder and gratitude for the amazing opportunity to be alive in this challenging time and show up to meet those challenges in a wachan way a sacred way may it be so Ho, oh, Pumprios, opening our eyes, coming back into being here. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was.
wonderful as always. Sure. <clears throat> Do you remember <clears throat> the first time when you were working, um, you know, with one of your, your um, indigenous elder, elder mentors um, in a shamanic ceremony, the first time that they talked about wounds and healing wounds at all? Mm. I'm, I'm opening my, activating my uh, memory <laughs> banks here to see what yeah. comes through. So I have to practice patience, yep. receptivity and humility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just watch, like sitting on the banks of the river, mm -hmm. watching, leaning up against a tree, the flow yep. of the river to see what comes through. Yeah, I, I suddenly see... Um, Oceana, who mm -hmm. could be uh, very dramatic, very, very intense, and, and with, with her high raised, raised voice in, in, in her ceremony, um, mm -hmm. saying to me, uh, you, you have to see the truth of what is. You have to see the truth of what is without any uh, defenses or protections or embellishment. Mm -hmm. You have to see the truth of what is if you want healing, because within the truth of what is is the information of what's needed. And uh, if you're sincere about wanting healing, what your part is in that, what your role is in that, you have to see yeah. what is. And then yeah. years later, with, with working with Jerry Jampolsky and children with life-threatening illness, coming to a deeper understanding that healing comes from joining our awareness with the truth of what is. Mm -hmm. it comes from joining with the truth of what is. Oh. Mm -hmm. I love that because it gets you out, like you you talked about, it gets you out of victimhood and brings you into that, what I started the conversation with about the, you know, the state being, each of us being part of the sacred web of life. And so with that, we're, we're literally co-creating things together, every, our realities, our existence, our, our beingness in, in every moment. So thank you. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to have you back. Thank you. Good to be here. Good to see all of you out there in our community. Thank you for, for sharing this time with us. Thank you for sh sharing Shamanic Sundays with your friends or family who may, may also um, enjoy being a part of it. And um, may we all do good breathing into whatever healing of our wounds and trauma needs to happen this week so that we can um, continue to shine and show up best for each other in this world. Thank you. Oh. All right. Anything else you want to say, Pops? Bye, con Dios. Go with God, goddess, the great spirit, and you can't go wrong. Walk with light, walk with love. You will be all right. Amen. I love that. Walk with light and walk with love. Let's all do that this week. Try our best. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Oh. Bye. See you next week.